Chiefs. Lamb. Chiefs. Loads of them. And the dog. You're not a sheep. Hi, I'm Alex. Welcome to the South of Spain. Welcome to Bike Matters. And I'm here on the launch of the Triumph Tiger 900 2024 range. We've had two days of riding. First day was on the GT Pro. Second day was on the Rally Pro, and that's today. And I've got to say, these are absolutely exceptional bikes. I've had an unreal time riding both of these. The GT Pro is a superb road bike in its own right. The Rally Pro, for me, just elevates it a little bit more and makes it just so easy to go to where we are here in the south of Spain, near Malaga, and near the Triumph Adventure experience to just send this thing and do exactly what you want to do on some of the fire roads, the trails, little really nagery bits where we were riding today. And went up to see some windmills, it was fantastic. So, 2024, these bikes were first launched in around 2020. GT Pro, Rally Pro, and then the GT as well. But we haven't ridden the GT, that's the sort of base spec. I don't think anyone really buys because they set their sights on the pro level stuff. 2024 updates include the updates to the T-Plane triple engine. It's now got more power, it's 108 PS, and I think 94 newton meters of torque. And basically that's around 12 PS more, I believe. But it's just incredible because they've updated all of the internals of this bike. It's now 9% more efficient for fuel economy. It has 9% less emissions. And they now quote a 450 kilometer tank range, which is around 270 miles. Now, of course, that's gonna be if you ride it re really economically. But in any case, with a 20 liter tank, 270 miles under the belt, that's pretty good going. Elsewhere, they've also updated the TFT dash. It's now seven inches of TFT, which comes from the Tiger 1200. It's a really nice intuitive dash. Now, when I first jumped on, on day one, when I was riding the GT Pro, I found the dash really way too simple because it just has your speed and that's basically it. You've got your ambient temperature and your fuel tank status. You don't have range, trip, anything like that. But then I told this to the Triumph guys and they were like, oh no, you can add in something on there. So you can start looking at your trip and you can add in these when you dive into the settings. So should have just dived into the settings really, but I was more concerned of riding the bike. Now that kind of takes me nicely on to how much these bikes are and how much you're going to be paying for the privilege of owning one of these in 2024. If you're looking at the GT base model, which is still decent, but you don't get your heated grips, you don't get the sort of uprated spec bits that you'd probably just want to have anyway. It's 12,195 pounds. It's 13,895 pounds for the GT Pro and it's 14,495 pounds for the Rally Pro. Now stay tuned because I'll talk about which one I'd go for and which one you should go for at the end of the video. But until then, I think that price is quite fair for the spec and the bike that you're getting for your money. In terms of the GT Pro, the road character is just so, so, so nice. When we set off on day one, we were just going through some really like calm, like villages and stuff like that, really nice twisty roads. But the bike itself was up against the weird southern spanish weather where we set off it was really miserable all of the dust and everything that settled on there made it extremely slippery so when we were setting off and we were riding away it was very tentative then as the day got on and the weather started heating up the road and everything was getting on really nicely this bike came into its own really easy to ride and it's really comfortable for me as a six foot three rider i did notice that some of the shorter riders in the launch group did struggle a bit when it was coming to a stop. And I'm talking people who are maybe like five foot six and below. So they are exceptionally short, jumping on this. And when they come to a stop, they're having to really jump off the bike. Triumph did remedy this by allowing you to adjust the seat height. And you can do that on both the GT and the Rally Pro. And depending on which one you go for, because the Rally Pro is a little bit taller because it's got longer travel suspension, you can adjust the seat height accordingly. So I've tried both settings on both bikes and I much prefer the taller, higher seat. And that is also a new feature for this bike. It's a flatter seat. It's got new padding inside it, I believe. Nice and comfortable seat. And the bike itself, really good for a tour. So factor in 20 litre tank and the alleged 270 mile range. And then the fact that you can adjust your riding mode. You've got your rain mode, you've got your road mode, sport mode, off-road mode, which this GT Pro does have as well. And day one was basically just a nice experience riding this bike as I would anyway. Really like this style of touring bike and the sort of sit up and beg as you'd call it. And this bike really did impress me. Then you move on to day two, the Rally Pro, and that's where I just couldn't get the smile off my face. This bike was incredible. Because of the torque curve has been improved, it's now all the delivery is nice and smooth throughout the rev range. Really nice long gears. You could sit in first and second on this bike, standing up in the comfortable pegs, and just move the bike underneath you, not have to even worry about the gears. 
Of course, if you start getting faster, you go into second, but the second gear is so long that you can just sit in second and just work away. So we had a really nice experience day two riding Rally Pro, headed over to the Triumph Adventure experience. And along the way, we basically went everywhere and everywhere on the fire roads and all of the stunning, stunning roads that Malaga and the surrounding area has to offer. When we got to the Triumph Adventure experience, had a little play around ourselves, and then a certain Ivan Sorventes turned up. Sorventas? Ivan turned up, and he was on it, absolutely smashed it. We'll throw in some clips of him riding about, but it was incredible. Got a reel on the social media fans going on to Bike Matters Instagram as well and just see what he was doing there because it was incredible. And that means that when this Rally Pro is in the right hands, it's pretty much unstoppable. So then we start moving into the sort of points of how is this bike as a sort of daily rider? Now, because it's so versatile, so capable, so comfortable to ride, you've got a one-hand adjust screen, a really nice TFT dash, it's got Bluetooth integration on both of these GT Pro and Rally Pro models. I think you could buy either of these and happily just ride away forever. It will do everything. Even the Rally Pro riding on road, of course, these will have the knobblies, but you can choose to go for the standard tires as we did ride on day one. I think that this bike will do it all. So if you're someone that only wants to have one bike or a bike to just do everything, you could look at the Rally or the GT Pro. Next question, which one would I go for? I'd absolutely go for the Rally Pro. I know it's the most expensive one out of the bunch, but it also has that ability to ride off-road. It's got Rally Pro mode and it just, the suspension as well from Showa as opposed to Marzocchi for the GT couple is so, so good. You can just ride over anything basically and it would just soak it up. Never felt like the bike was bottoming out. It wanted to skid and put the back end out a little bit, but then it, you never felt like the bike was out of control. It never really felt like it was hiccuping too much if you started to really get a bit too confident in your own abilities. Now, I'm not a huge, amazing off-road rider, but I do enjoy it. And this bike made it so easy for me to just jump on and enjoy the ride. So for that reason, I'd get this, head down to maybe like Thetford Forest or any of the byways in the UK and just see what I can do on a Sunday afternoon. But on the other hand, GT Pro, it is a little bit more focused for the road. So if you're someone who's just gonna do a lot of touring miles and basically spend most of your life on the road and not really bother about the off-road bit. This one might look a little bit nicer with this stunning paintwork, but you're probably best off going for the GT Pro. In any case, and it pains me to say it, I think one of the, this is one of the bikes I've enjoyed riding the most. And this launch has been incredible to show off the versatility of the bike, just how capable it is, especially in the right hands. And I would absolutely recommend anyone to come down to the Triumph Adventure Experience, jump on a Rally Pro for the day, head out to the trails that are nearby, head out to the complex that they have there and just enjoy it because it was an absolute top couple of days here. Whilst we sit back and watch some of the footage from the two days of riding, I thought it would be nice to delve a little bit deeper into the riding character of the 2024 Tiger 900. The engine response and feel, the comfort and tech on offer, and even a few of the niggles I noticed when exploring the gorgeous landscape of Southern Spain. Now with updates to the T-Plane 888cc triple, in 2024. As mentioned, power is up to 106.5 brake horsepower and 90 newton meters of torque. Now this was achieved with big changes internally, that's including new pistons, a cylinder head, inlet and exhaust tweaks, increased compression ratio to 13 to one. The end result builds on what was already a very competent engine. It's got long gearing and a smooth and even now smoother torque delivery all across the rev range. These tweaks don't necessarily sound huge on paper, but it wasn't even crying out for an update in the previous generation. So these engineers have implemented these tweaks beautifully. A versatile motor is very much appreciated when you're riding on and off road. And despite setting off on day one with some ice-like conditions and with day two fully off road, the power to the rear wheel was delivered beautifully through the ride by wire throttle. Now, depending on your rider mode, output does change. So rain mode isn't quite as abrupt as sports mode, for example and for good reason. I also found the span adjust clutch nice and light with the slip and assist clutch doing a lot of the work or the shift assist or Triumph's quick shifter on the pro models stepped in brilliantly nice and smooth every single time on up and down shifts. On the riding modes one slight drawback I noticed was its insistence on stepping in when it felt the rear wheel losing a bit of traction. No doubt doing exactly the right thing given the conditions and some of the Triumph guys are even saying it's impossible to crash this thing. Don't want to try that out. But some would argue on its intrusiveness even if you're very confident in your ability to control 
control your corner entry. When you're in road mode, it did seem to get the rear wheel a little bit twitchy when you weigh down on the rear brake and the hazard lights would switch on, which is a new feature for this year. And it would lead me to basically just adjust my riding solely to rely on a bit more of front brake with less of the rear, just to avoid that rear tail wagging. You can also tweak the rider mode, of course, in the pro models to suit what you need from the rider aids and sort of tweak it a little bit as you go. A big note here is to remember to switch to off-road mode if you don't want traction control stepping in when you're riding on looser terrain. You do have to fully stop the bike to do this, though it is just closing the throttle whilst you're moving to switch between the on-road modes. And if switching the bike off when you're leaving the bike when you're on off-road, when you get back to it, you can switch the bike back on and follow the prompts to reactivate the mode you're in, which is simply just pressing the mode button and pressing the tick on the joystick. It's always a handy touch and very nice when you're wanting to just get back on the trails. So a little bit of touring and comfort to talk about here. This mostly applies to the GT Pro, which I spent most of the first day riding on road. The turn in feel mid corner was really impressive. That 19 inch front wheel doing a great job of holding a line mid corner. Though the Rally Pro did take a tiny bit more encouragement to turn in with its 21 inch front wheel and tightening your line mid corner did take a little bit more effort, but both were sweet. Seat height does vary from 820 to 840 mil on the GT range and it can be adjusted on the fly easily by popping the seat and moving a couple of the bars. Very handy and easily done. The seat is, as I mentioned, new for this year, flatter and it's got new padding and I did find it very comfortable for all day riding. The handlebars are also giving new damping and I didn't notice any vibrations when cruising along with my cruise control switched on. I will note, of course, I did have adventure boots on, so take it as you will. If you're doing a long distance tour, this 2024 Tiger 900 is a great balance of poise and power. And you can extend the windshield up by 50 mil with one hand when you're riding, and that gives you a decent coverage from oncoming wind blusters. Though of course my helmet does have a peak, so it was certainly a windy affair for me anyway. It's worth noting the Pro Duo also get heated grips and seats as standard, which is a lovely touch. Suspension on both models can be manually adjusted for rebound and compression damping, and the GT Pro is given a rear Marzocchi electronic adjustment setting for preload and rebound. I can't stress just how good the show unit is on the Rally Pro though, and overall it just felt always up to the task. You wouldn't ever want to ride right to the limits of every bike at all times, but it does feel like the Rally Pro limits, for the suspension at least, were sky high. A humble mention goes to the Brembo Stylema monoblocks up front on the twin 320mm discs with the rear 255mm discs. They do have a lot of metal to stop, 222kg on the GT Pro, 228 on the Rally Pro. But other than that rear brake twitch that sometimes appeared on heavy braking, there are no complaints about stopping power here at all. I was even able to trail brake into quite a few of the corners as the road conditions improved on the spectacular Spanish route. In terms of miles per gallon and fuel, Triumph quotes 60.4 miles per gallon as the average fuel consumption with its 20 litre tank. Now we covered a solid 150-ish miles on day one and when filling up our tank was half full half empty depends on what you prefer saying and that gives a what theoretical 300-ish mile range that's unreal but of course we'd need to test it longer than just a day to see what the real range is so to summarize this tiger 900 for 2024 was just nothing short of incredible fun to ride if you're after a tourer and or adventurer and you're looking for that signature triumph Talk delivery, these are great options to consider, particularly if you're after an adventure ready machine like the Rally Pro. With its Showa suspension, Bridgestone Battle Axe hoops, or Metzler Torrance for the road goers, and its off road pro modes, and just all of the bits you get on that Rally Pro, you're onto a winner. The price is nearing some of the top competition course price at £14,495 but I would argue this bike will easily compete with the best and Sir Ivan Cervantes was testament to that as well. So I think I've covered just about everything. If you head over to Lexham Insurance website you can get yourself an insurance quote there for your adventure bike or your touring bike but you can also read my full in-depth review where I go into the spec a little bit more and talk about the bikes ins and outs a little bit more. You can also head over to our social media channels just see what we're up to and see some behind the scenes sort of footage. Naturally, of course, whilst you're on this video, if you enjoyed it, give us a like, subscribe, leave a comment, do all that good stuff. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Ciao.